Hello, everybody. Welcome to part six of the Magdalene Manuscript. As you know, last week, we finished up the channeling from allegedly from Mary Magdalene. And this week, we're going to get into some of the practices. It'll be interesting to see how this goes. I have looked ahead at some of the practices, and they're definitely pranayamic practices, stuff that I've done before. If things get really interesting in the book, and if you guys want me to, there is a possibility that I could film some pranayama for you guys. But as a professional, as someone who is authorized to teach, I would also suggest that if you want to get deep into pranayama, find a pranayama teacher live in person to help you to do hands-on adjustments to you to make sure that you are actually sitting properly and, and doing everything necessary in order to ignite the full um, experience of the pranayamic exercises. Again, pranayama means breath work. Prana means life force or upward rising life force and yama means extension. So you're extending your life's capacity through breath. So we're going to start this episode off going back to one of the scriptures or the channelings rather that was read last week on how to initiate yourself into this priesthood or priestesshood. As I've said before, you guys know that I'm very well aware that I, in past existences, have been in the priestesshood of Isis. I know for a fact that I was pretty high up in the priestesshood of Isis in one particular past life, a life that is nearing this life. And so um, I'm going to do the initiation ritual on camera for you guys, just so you can see. I also thought it would be kind of fun. So let's get into it. So this is going to take us back to section 30. Finally, I wish to turn my attention to the term initiates, for I've used this term extensively throughout this material. The term initiate refers to one who has decided to live upward in consciousness, one who has decided to leave behind the mundane life and to enter into an adventure of consciousness. Generally speaking, the crossing of the threshold from mundane to sacred life is marked by a ritual of initiation. In ancient practices, a candidate would be initiated by a priest or priestess, and this priest or priestess would have the power to confer upon that individual the relative power of the lineage to which they belong. In certain types of transitions, an external initiator is needed or required. However, for the beginning phase, it is possible for a person to initiate themselves for the true essence of initiation means to mark a threshold, the crossing from the mundane life into the sacred life. For those who feel drawn to practice the alchemies of Horus and who wish to mark their commitment to living the sacred life, I offer this simple ritual. I give this instruction because there is such a scarcity of qualified persons to conduct initiations into the ancient lineage of Egypt. For this ritual, one would need a candle and two glasses or cups. So I have a candle here, a white candle. It's already been burnt a little bit, but this is a white candle for spiritual protection. And I have my two glasses or cups. One has water in it. You'll see why in a minute. These were two glasses from my grandmother's house, actually, that I never really use, but I got them out to put my grandmother's around me a lot in a spirit form. So I thought that would be a calling to use these cups. All right. All right, so one of the cups is filled with water. Again, this one's filled with water. And the other one is empty. If you wish, you can add flowers and incense, making the ritual as aesthetically pleasing as you desire. But fundamentally, self-initiation is an act of intention and personal and spiritual will. If you want to light incense, you can or have flowers. I have not done that here. So it, I've just got the basic bare necessities. The ritual is simply an external reflection of something that is occurring deep within oneself. And indeed, this internal choice can be made without the need of an external ritual at all. For the ritual without internal choices is worthless. Exactly, exactly. For this ritual, you will light the candle and then speak these words. Spirit of all life, be my witness here. For the sake of my own elevation and the elevation of all life, Shall I strive to be harmless to myself and to all others? I'll do that one more time. Actually, let's do it three times because three is a very powerful number. Spirit of all life, be my witness here. For the sake of my own elevation and the elevation of all life, I shall strive to be harmless to myself and all others. 
Spirit of all life, be my witness here for the sake of my own elevation and the elevation of all life. I shall strive to be harmless to myself and all others. Then holding the glass or container of water in the right hand, you should pour the water into the container or glass in the left hand. By saying these words, you seal this action. And so that's super important. If you joined us for the hands episode, I've moved the camera down so you guys can see. If you joined us for the hands episode with Shanti on Aquarius Rising Africa, the hand is giving, the, the right hand is giving, and the left hand is receiving. So just to just so you guys know that again, if you want to do this at home. So once more, she is saying, then holding the glass or container of water in the right hand, you would pour the water into the container or glass in the left hand. By these words, you will seal this action. So water with glass with water, right hand, without water, left hand. So by the pouring of this water, I signify the transfer of my sacred waters of life from the mundane to the sacred spirit of all life. Be my witness here. Amen. 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 Let's do it two more times. By pouring of this water, I signify the transfer of my sacred water of life from the mundane to the sacred spirit of all life by be my witness here. Amen. 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 By the pouring of this water, I signify the transfer of my sacred water of life from the mundane to the sacred spirit of all life. Be my witness here. Amen. 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 All right. So now that we've done that, I'm just going to move my candle over to the side of the computer here. Let it burn, continue to burn. And now we're ready to start into the training protocols in the alchemies of Taurus. And once again, guys, these rituals are not satanic. They're not anything like that. It's a cleansing. It's a ritual expression of you cleansing yourself, being ready to take on more of a spiritual um, uh, opening into your own divine life. All right. So the training protocols in the alchemies of Taurus. This is page 77 in my Book. This section is for those who wish to explore a basic practice within the alchemies of Horus. Magdalene gave an advanced form of the individual practices in the manuscript, but this may be too complex for many readers. I therefore asked her if she might offer a simpler form of preparatory exercise, and this is the result. The manuscript was not meant as a teaching manual, but to convey a message. And so the protocols below serve as the teaching function. They will give you the basic experience needed to enter the advanced practices of the two serpents mentioned in the manuscript. According to the Magdalene, the alchemies of Horus were the foundation for both of those on the solitary path and for those in partnership. The main difference between the two paths is that the person on the solitary path must generate the extra energy and ecstasies from his or her own efforts. Those in sacred tantric relationships acquire the needed energy and ecstasies spontaneously from the sex act. The sacred pathway of the chakra begins at the base of the spine and goes up through the spine and into the head. So once again, we call this in yoga, the sacred pathway that starts at the base of the spine and goes up through the head. We call this shashumna in yoga. It's a nadi or a pathway up the body. There is a secondary sacred pathway that moves from the perineum directly up to the crown called the central column or central pillar. In some esoteric schools, it is referred to as the pranic tube. The training exercise below use both of these pathways. So again, pranic is represented by the sun. It's the upward rising energy. Pranic, it's the same word from pranayama, the breathing exercises I just spoke about earlier in this video. The fundamental alchemical task in relation to the sacred pathway is to accumulate enough energy so that it can be sent up through the pathway and into the head centers. The training exercises below generate the needed energy from the power of the breath. Their purpose is to familiarize you with the feeling, the physical sensation, if you will, or subtle energy moving up the sacred pathway. The first section of the training protocol consists of three different exercises. The first one deals with a secondary sacred pathway, the central column or pillar that runs directly from the perineum up to the crown. The second exercise deals with the primary sacred pathway that runs up the spine. 
The second section of training protocol familiarizes you with how to transform the energy moving through the sacred pathway into a serpent-like form. And finally, the last exercise familiarizes you with activating the pathway of the two serpents by experiencing energy moving simultaneously through both the lunar and solar pathways. So again, lunar aponic, solar pranic. Caution to the readers. Due to the fact that these exercises bring up energy into the brain and upper head centers, they are contradicted for some individuals. If you have suffered a head injury or experienced a stroke, speak with your physician before proceeding. Those who suffer from seizures such as epilepsy should also seek the advice of their physicians before undertaking these training meditations. Finally, for those who are manic depressive, these exercises are contradicted, especially during manic phases. For all other persons, the meditations are quite harmless and very beneficial. If you experience headaches at any time during the meditation, stop and rest. So yeah, I'm going to second that, especially when it comes, I was telling my class a couple weeks ago that I've heard stories. I mean, I've done a lot of deep pranayama work with teachers and in traditional yoga, you have to be invited to do pranayama work because um, not only is it really intense, but there has to be a certain level of understanding about what you're doing um, energetically versus just physically. And that takes a while um, after you've started your path to really let that integrate, that understanding of spirituality integrate into your system. We're also looking, at least in my lineage of yoga, in order to do pranayama, you really need to be physically fit because the body is in deep pranayamic practice. It looks like here it's just going to be very basic, but in deep pranayamic practices, you're going to have to ask your body to actually do a lot. So they want you to be in a place of physical fitness to be able to then be a part of these practices. So please take that into consideration before starting any type of pranayamic practices. So the first section... The first exercise, sit comfortably and close your eyes. Place the focus of your attention, in other words, the alchemic container of your awareness on your pelvic floor. This is the area of the body at the lowest part of your abdomen, the cradle of your pelvis. So I'm going to stand up. I've done this before. This is super important. Your lower pelvic floor. So it's right here. My hips are here. This is the pelvic floor right here. So you guys have seen me talk about a lot of bar classes where you're pulling in from the pelvic floor. I don't have the best outfit on to see this because it's a dress, but this is the pelvic floor. This is right where it all is centered. The Kundalini serpent lives in that pelvic floor until it starts to wake up and move up the spine, right? Um, this is also uh, right above your perineum. So right above where your crotch is basically is where that pelvic floor is. Find a rhythm that is pleasurable for you and breathe deeply yet comfortably, drawing the breath into your belly. As you inhale, let the lower abdominal expand, and as you exhale, pull the lower abdominum in. This form of breathing is called abdominal breathing and may feel odd to you at first. After a while, however, it will feel natural and comfortable. Throughout all these exercises, it is very important that all breaths be gentle and comfortable. Nothing should ever be forced in these practices. So yes, yeah, so this is why pranayamic practices are very different from what we call the asana practice, the posture practice in yoga. Because when you're breathing in your asana practice, you want to keep your stomach contracted or pulled in. That's your udiyana bandha. That's the pulling up of the mudra. But in certain breathing exercises, you're actually going to release that and pull it back in again. There's an intense, I've talked about this a lot on other shows, there's an intense um, breath work called Uddiyana Bandha Kriya. I've showed a picture of me doing Uddiyana Bandha Kriya, where you exhale all the breath out and you aggressively pull the stomach in on no breath and hold it and it hollows the belly out. This is beneficial for many reasons. Um, we also do this in headstands, uh, Shirshasana where we're up in the Ashtanga practice, you're supposed to be at the end of your practice, be up in a headstand for about 15 minutes to really drain out um, and really allow the elixirs to come down your spine. But then at the end, you have pike for about 10 breaths. And that involves pulling your butt basically past your head and hollowing the belly out again for another 10 breaths and then lifting back up again to really pull through that area of the body. So this is an important exercise with how to work your abdominal center. 
As you inhale, imagine the energy of your breath reaching down into every nook and cranny of your pelvis. The reason for this is that you are causing Shechem to stir, and Shechem, or your life force, is cradled in the pelvic area. Yep. As you exhale, keep your focus in that pelvis. This will cause the energy of Shechem to build or intensify in the pelvic area. Continue this for a couple of minutes or so. Then imagine a subtle energy pathway or channel that runs from your perineum up to the top of your head or the crown. So again, that channel is running up, 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 through all the way. Again, that's why in a lot of breathing exercises, we use Jamadar Bunda tucking in the chin. So it releases the back of the neck. So the energy comes into the crown. The perineum is located at the lowest point of your torso, midway between your genitals and anus. Yeah. Next, there is a slight but significantly shifting of your attention. As you inhale, keep your focus in the pelvis area as before. But when you exhale, shift your attention, the alchemic container of your awareness, into the channel. This will cause the energy of Shechem to enter the channel and begin to move upward. As you continue to exhale, move your attention all the way up the channel into your head. Then repeat the breathing pattern all over again. In other words, each time you inhale, shift your attention to the pelvis and hold it there throughout the entire inhale. As you exhale, shift your attention to the channel and begin to move your focus up the channel towards the head. Repeat as many times as you need to clearly sense a movement of energy of the secondary sacred pathway into the head. Now I will say um, it's actually backwards from that, from my studies. And again, this is channeled. So just take this with a grain of salt because she might've, you might've heard that wrong because the exhale is upon it. So like in times I've done this type of exercise where you're sitting and breathing, you sit up straight, lock your chin in. You, you exhale, you follow the aponic breath, the exhale down the spine, you hold it, don't breathe, hold the breath, then inhale, follow it back up the, sp the spine because the inhale is always the rising. The exhale is always the um, descending. So again, find a teacher. If you're a little confused by that, talk to a professional. These exercises are built upon each other. So it is important to master each one before proceeding to the next. Make sure you feel a definite movement of subtle energy up the secondary sacred pathway and into the head. If you don't have a clear sense of this, repeat the exercise over and over again until you do. Yes, practice, 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 practice all is coming, as my um, teacher used to say, practice all is coming. All right, a note about uncomfortable physical sensations. Occasionally, a person might experience tension or headache from these exercises. This may occur if there is habitual tension in the muscles of the jaw, face, mouth, or neck, since this type of muscle tension tends to constrict the movement of the shakem or life force as it moves up into the head. If you experience discomfort at any time during these exercises, you should stop, put them aside, and return to them later. If you find this type of tension arises whenever you do the exercise, you might want to try yawning, since yawning helps to lessen muscle tension in your face, jaws, and shoulders. Simply yawn so you can inhale and exhale. It can be quite effective, and beside that, it's fun. If tension persists, I suggest you shift your attention to the area of tension and imagine that attention dissolves and leaves with each exhale. Try it for a few minutes. It often dissolves this type of muscular tension quite nicely. So my jaw sometimes gets tight, especially if I'm in a time in my life where I feel like I'm not being heard or I feel like an injustice has been done and I feel it a lot at night. You can do actual, it's not very attractive, but actual stretching exercises for your mouth where you just move your mouth around. You can either motorboat your, your lips to kind of get the, the jaw to relax. Um, I actually do a lot of these exercises with my jaw before I come on and do filming a lot to make sure my vocals and my muscles and my mouth are warmed up since I'm going to be talking in a video, whether for my channel or for another channel for an hour or so. I want to make sure that all these muscles in my mouth are warmed up, especially if it's first thing in the morning and I haven't really spoken to a lot of people yet. All right. The second exercise. In this exercise, you basically do the same thing you did in the first, except that the movement of the shakem is up the spine or the primary sacred pathway. Sit comfortably, close your eyes, place the focus of your attention, in, in other words, the alchemical container of awareness on your pelvic floor. Find a rhythm that is pleasurable for you and breathe dif, uh, deeply, though comfortably. Drawing the breath into your belly. As you inhale, let the lower abdominal expand, and as you exhale, pull in the lower abdominal. As you inhale, imagine the energy of your breath reaching down into every nook and cranny of your pelvis. 
The reason for this is that you are, as in this first exercise, causing Shechem to stir. And Shechem are your life force in the cradle of this pelvic area. As you exhale, keep your focus in the pelvis. This will cause the energy of Shechem to build or intensify in the pelvic area. Continue this for a couple of minutes or so. Then your attention changes somewhat. On the inhales, attention is still in the pelvis, but on the exhale, shift your attention to the spine and move your attention up the spine to the base of the head with each exhale. Continue this for a few minutes until you're, you sense a clear sensation of energy moving up the spine and to the top of the head. After you clearly sense this flow of subtle energy, proceed to the next exercise. If you do not sense this flow of energy, then repeat the exercises until you do. The third exercise. In this exercise, you follow the same procedures as you did in the exercise number two with one difference. When you exhale and the energy of Shikam or life force moves up the spine, bring it to the center of the head instead of to the top. As the energy is brought up into the center of the head, you allow it to circulate through the brain, sensing the movement of energy. Sit comfortably and close your eyes. Place the focus of your attention, in other words, the alchemical container of your awareness on your pelvic floor. Find a rhythm that is pleasurable for you and breathe deeply, though comfortably, drawing the breath into your belly. As you inhale, let the lower abdominal expand, and as you exhale, pull in the lower abdominal. As you inhale, imagine the energy of your breath reaching down into every nook and cranny of your pelvis. The reason for this is that you are are, as in this first exercise, causing the shechem to stir, and shechem, or your life force, is cradled in the pelvic area. As you exhale, keep your focus in the pelvis. This will cause the energy of shechem to build or intensify in the pelvic area. Continue this for a couple of minutes or so. After a few minutes of building the energy in the pelvis, you are ready for the next phase. So shechem could also be kundalini. That's a big word talked about now is kundalini, which kundalini is not bad been inverted by the bad guys but that in itself that's the christ consciousness is the kundalini after a few minutes of building the energy in the pelvis you're ready for the next phase on the inhales attention is still in the pelvis but on the exhale shift your attention into the spine so going from the pelvis to the spine pelvis to the spine and move your attention up the spine from the base to the center of your head with each exhale. The energy of shakem will follow the circuit of your attention and flow upwards into the central area of the brain. Then pause for a moment and sense the flow of energy as it moves on, as it moves on its own through different areas of the brain. Continue this for a few minutes until you sense a clear sensation of energy moving up the spine and into the center of the brain. And also, guys, so the core and the spine are basically one and the same. They're very much connected. I think you've heard me say that backbending is stomach opening. And a lot of times in a very gross level, lower level understanding of of how they're talking about pulling the pelvis in and focus on the spine. You know, when people have bad backs, one of the main things you do for that person is get them to strengthen their core to be able to then pull in and hold the spine. And so there's a huge correlation between the two. And I would definitely suggest with these pelvic exercises for everyone to be really focused on that core strength, because that muscle strength is what's actually going to also activate the flow of energy in the body. That's why in a lot of these old spiritual and religious practices, there was a lot of emphasis on physicality of the body, because we want to keep it active, we want to keep it activated in order to keep to continuing to move the energy. As they say, a body in motion stays in motion. All right, the second section. The first exercise, rising of the single serpent. In this exercise, you repeat what you did in the last exercises of the previous section. However, instead of taking the energy into the center of your head, you bring the energy up and over the two hemispheres, just under the top of the skull. This movement of energy is cobra-like, in that the tail of the serpent extends down the full length of the spine to the base, while the hood of the cobra is extended over. And that's the... um. That's a picture of Patanjali. That's how they often show Patanjali, who wrote the Yoga Sutras, which Patanjali was also an incarnation of that Christ consciousness with the cobra head coming over the top of the spine. Holding the energy in the image of a cobra in this way causes a distinct type of brain stimulation for the urius. Sit comfortably and close your eyes. Place the focus of your attention. In other words, the alchemical container of your awareness on your pelvic floor. Find a rhythm that is pleasurable for you and breathe deeply, though comfortably, drawing the breath into your belly. 
As you inhale, let the lower abdominal expand. And as you exhale, pull in the lower abdominal. As you inhale, imagine the energy of your breath reaching down into every nook and cranny of your pelvis. The reason for this is that you are causing shikam to stir, and shikam or your life force is cradled in the pelvic area. As you exhale, keep your focus in the pelvis. This will cause the energy of shikam to build or intensify in the pelvic area. Continue this for a couple of minutes or so. After a few minutes of building the energy in the pelvis, you are ready for the next phase. On the inhales, attention is still in the pelvis, but on the exhale, shift your attention to the spine and move your attention up the spine from the base to the space above the two hemispheres or the brain directly under the top of the skull. And if you remember, guys, we've talked about this before. There's an energy. There's a chakra here. And this is right where the baby's soft spot is when a baby is born. It's right that same area that they're talking about here. As you sense this space above the brain, allow yourself to feel the movement of the energy. Imagine this form of energy as a cobra with its hood extended over the brain itself. Then repeat the procedure until you have a clear sense of the serpent-like form of energy over the brain. Second exercise, the two serpents. In this exercise, it is assumed that you have successfully experienced the single serpent in the previous exercise. If you haven't clearly experienced the single serpent, return to the previous exercise before continuing. In the manuscript, you will find a description of the black and gold serpent. The black serpent rises through the lunar, lunar pathway on the left side of the sacred pathway and is connected to, with the darkness of the void or the cretex of all creation. So once again, the womb, the womb is dark. We saw this in Megan Watterson's book over Mary Magdalene. We're also seeing this in the Sophia code and the lunar sign, the aponic sign, the left side, why my nose is pierced on the left is the feminine side. Women are associated with the moon because we have the darkness of the womb. And what's more aponically ener energized than having a baby. It's a real downward push of energy. The gold serpent rises through the solar pathways on the right side of the sacred pathway and is connected with the light. This is the masculine, right? The pranic, the sun. Think about it with the male's body and the woman's body. Men are usually have big, strong arms. I like a man with big, strong arms, right? Um, they have big, strong arms where women have smaller arms and are usually stronger in their legs. The yin and the yang, the alpha, the omega. In, in a sense, the two serpents are alchemically opposite. And when you bring two opposites together with an alchemical container, there is a possibility of immense energy. In this preliminary training, you will be causing the energies of Shechem to split into two different streams of energy. As the life force rises up the sacred pathway, it takes two different yet parallel paths. The black serpent rises from the left side at the base of the sacred pathway, while the gold serpent rises from the right side of the sacred pathway, also from the base. However, as they continue to rise up the sacred pathway towards the head, they cross over each other as they enter the chakras. So they're going through each chakra point, all seven chakra points. Yeah. Thus, the gold serpent crosses over the left side of the sacred pathway as it enters the sexual chakra, which is your second chakra, but between your third and your first, so between Muladhara and Manipur, that's right in that kind of belly button region, that's your second chakra. And the black crosses over the right. As they climb further up the sacred pathway, the gold serpent crosses back over the right side as it enters into the solar plexus, and the black serpent crosses over to the left. Solar plexus are Manipur, your third one. Next, the gold serpent crosses to the left side as it enters the heart, and the black crosses over the right side. As they enter to the throat chakra, the gold serpent returns to the right side of the sacred pathway, and the black serpent to the left. Finally, meet at the center of the head with the gold serpent hovering on the right side while the black serpent hovers on the left. Both of them face each other with the pineal gland sitting in between. The manuscript gets further instruction on how to do the practice. The purpose of this exercise, however, is just to familiarize you with the phenomenon of rising both serpents up the sacred pathway and into the head. To do the exercise, sit comfortably, close your eyes, place the focus of your attention, in other words, the alchemical container of your awareness on the pelvic floor. Find a rhythm that is pleasurable for you and breathe deeply, though comfortably, drawing the breath into your belly. As you inhale, let the lower abdominal expand, and as you exhale, pull in the lower abdominal. 
As you inhale, imagine the energy of your breath reaching down into every nook and cranny of your pelvis. The reason for this is that you are causing Shechem to stir and Shechem or life force is cradled in the pelvic area. As you exhale, keep your focus in the pelvis. This will cause the energy of Shechem to build or intensify in the pelvic area. Continue this for a couple of minutes or so. After a few minutes of building the energy in the pelvis, you are ready for the next phase. On the inhales, attention is still at the pelvis, but the exhales shift your attention to the base of the sacred pathway. Through the power of intention, imagine the two serpents being charged with energy of the breath. As you continue to exhale, send the energy up through the two pathways of the serpents. Imagine them as clearly in your mind as possible, seeing them cross each other at each of the chakras and finally ending in the center of the head. Continue this practice until you have a clear sense of the two serpent-like energies running up the spine and into the head. Allow yourself to sense the movement or life force up these two pathways as the serpents writhe in response to your breath. Sense the subtle energies that are generated within the brain as a result of this practice. And they have a little picture here in the book of what that looks like. So yes, this makes a lot of sense to me because I have studied this in yoga. So next week, we're going to cover the internal alchemy.